very well done. And uh, the way you did the, uh, the proof is, and without any beef and writing, I find that really neat. And um, how you guys, uh, some of you did some sketches that were really neat. Uh, the other part, the rest of the test, I thought went very well too. Uh, but we have a few people that still have to take it. But your brain is online, so you can check that out. Uh, number two, listening to you yesterday, uh, you had trouble with substitution. Um, two ways. One, of you, one is that some of you think you have to be able to do it very quick. I have had very good students who can't do it quickly. Okay? And so, um, I'm going to show you one today where we can do it pretty quickly, and I think most of you will, but if you can't, do it with substitution. And um, it's, we're going to learn a lot of techniques, and there are a lot of them out there, but we're not going to learn very many of them this year, and this is a key one. Okay? Uh, so, um, here are the uh, problems that we have for a few more substitution ones for Monday. Get this done for Monday. This is due Monday. This in here, I have now moved it back to Tuesday. Okay? I moved this back to Tuesday, and uh, um, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. But, but if you have to have it finished, there are quite a ways with the wow. break. Uh, this is that. Okay, now on that. These are the answers to the even. These are the answers to the evens. Okay? Another thing. One of them in there deals with these relationships. Now, these are the two he works with. If you have cosine squared, you cannot find the antiderivative of it. It's not going to be possible for you. So you change it to the double angle one, which is in the front of your cover of your book or the blue sheet. Okay? And the, the cosine is this, and the sine is this, and you notice they only vary with a plus and a minus, and you notice the cosine still goes with the cosine, and the sine does go back to the cosine. And when I develop these, I actually developed three of these. One doesn't very helpful, but the, this is where you find a very good use of that. Why do we have to learn this for? Well, here we are, right over here. This top one is kind of interesting too, because you can find the derivative of this here side, which I'm pointing to here, uh, via substitution. But this is much easier doing it on this side. Okay? This is really, really simple. Okay? But, um, and you'll get the same answer doing it by substitution here, or if you remember the, that way. So, um, I put that up there for that. Now, <clears throat> for today, I'm going to continue to do this quantity uh, issue, uh, net change. Every one of these problems are very much alike. The one I'm going to do today is, I think, my favorite of the works. Uh, Monday, I'll do a business problem because I number, number of you were gone yesterday and made some wonderful recognition. Congratulations. Thanks. Jason and Grant. Grant and, okay, Grant and Grant. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I noticed that and I, I thought, hey, at this point, uh, I'm going to make certain I give you some uh, calc uh, examples of business. But often in the area of business, you aren't going to use calc because many people there can't understand it. They don't have enough you know, like advanced math and this kind of stuff to do it. Okay? So, um, but you guys do. Already. Okay, now here, here's the issue. We're going to take a look at um, uh, problem five, example five on page 377. Okay, now, a few quick things there. And I'm going to point out some things to you so this doesn't have to look so scary. Um, we, we're going to go from A to B, and he says we're going to have here quantity derivative, which is a rate. Uh, at t, dt. Now, he says that's equal to q at t, no, q at b, excuse me, q at b minus q at um, a. Okay? Now, the, the thing here, if you take the derivative of this, you get this. See that? Okay? But now, many times you're going to be given this rate which we will be given in a few minutes. 
and then you have to find the antiderivative. Okay? And so that's why this is here. Uh, now, uh, the next thing is this. I'm going to let a equal 0. If I do that, uh, then this becomes a 0, and that becomes a 0. And so now watch, I'm going to try to do a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. I'll put a 0 here, 2b at q at t, like this root prime, like that dt. That is going to be there. That's this thing. This thing, oh, uh, no, I won't put that. I'll just take another step, even though it takes a little time to write. Minus q at, uh, q at 0. That means your quantity to begin with. Quantity to begin with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to each side, and I'll put that over here instead uh, to start with. Okay? Now, what does this say? It says this. Got about lucky here. I didn't think I was going to get it done this way. Okay? Now, your ending quantity is going to be equal to what you start with plus the rate thing. Okay? All of the problems work this way. And they're not all that terribly difficult. And here's one of the most amazing ones dealing with the area of um, biology science. Those are some really good ones. We can find some in business too. But, okay, uh, in this problem, it says n at t, the rate at t of uh, some cell multiplication is equal to 90 e to the negative 0.1 t, like that. That's the rate. And it's, now, since this is a rate, what is it? Cells are developing per hour, either growing or, or decreasing, whatever. Okay? <coughs> now, um, what I'd like to do here is just show you this curve. You'll notice this is E, and it's negative, and 0.1 T. And I think I have it on Desmos here, uh, just to show you, because I want to show you another one after a few bit, a little bit. Um, um, mm -hmm. Okay, now notice, um, okay, um, this is the one that I've highlighted. It starts at 90 over here, and what's growing here, which is a little tricky, is this area down here. This area down here, we're going to be adding to 100. Okay, and notice way over here, we're not going to be adding very much. So what? This is a logistics kind of problem, which we'll see when we get pretty well finished with it. Um, I want to change this here. What's, what's this doing? Okay. Um, so you see, see this nice little curve, exponential curve? And uh, this means it goes through 90, and it's coming down very nicely like that. And E of all the most beautiful things you can find in the world. Okay, okay now um, let's go and solve this thing. And the problem says, suppose the population is increasing at this rate, and we start with 100 cells. Okay? So we're going to start with 100 of these things. And we're, see, that's this circle. Where am I? Right here. That's here. Okay? And we're going to add to it, and we're going to go from 0 to t. Now, this is going to vary a little bit with the book, but not much. He's going to all of a sudden slip in a dx in there, and I'm going to leave it be. I'm just going to do it just like it's up here. And this part here is this right here. This is the rate. It's going to be here. So that's a rate here. See this rate here? Okay. And my rate is this, point zero, negative point, negative uh, zero point one t dt. Now I think he has x dx here. No big deal. Okay. So now I'm going to evaluate this. Uh, a couple of you yesterday got nailed for this by not showing me how this actually works in detail. Um, and put, um, um, and I'll show you what I mean by that with a little straight line behind it and so that's, that is important, okay? So now this is, this is 100 plus, what's the antiderivative of that? Well, that's a 90, we'll just leave that there. What's the antiderivative of this? And you have to use substitution, I just do it this way, uh, or knowing chain rule, and it's going to be divided by a negative point 0.1. Okay. Now you're you should use u substitution, but today I'm not going to have much too much time here, and I'm going to evaluate this from zero to uh, uh, t. And now you notice there's a t here already. Okay. Now let me just show you something here, man. Uh, now I'll erase it down here. 
Um, you notice here I have e to the negative point 1t, and I'd like to find its antiderivative just do this part. Okay? And I'm going to contend that's going to be itself, because it's one of those e's, which is so nice. And then I'm going to have to have this down here. Um, and if you can't do that easily and really be comfortable about it, use u substitution. Yes? Is it on the bottom because it's negative? Pardon? Is it on the bottom because it's negative? No. Uh -huh. No, it's not that. No, it's because it's the anti Okay. Now, I oh, have this. Okay, I got it. You got it, but others don't yet. I'm going to take the derivative of this. Because when I take the derivative of this, I should get this up here. Are you with me where I'm at? The derivative of this should give me this up here. Okay, what's the derivative of this? It's itself. Okay, because of that, that uh, all over, um, okay, here, negative point 0.1. Then I have to do the chain rule, which is what is the derivative of this? Negative point 0.1. One. See, and then this cancels with this, and you notice this is exactly what I have up here. All right. Okay? Uh, that's why he has you do a little guessing because some of these come out pretty nice. And uh, so, anyway. Uh, now, this is what some of you didn't show me, and I need to see that, okay? Uh, and and as, as a result, some of you did make a tiny little mistake later, and I had to take all of it off, because uh, if you had it there, I could have just taken one point off for manipulation here. Okay, now, so this is 100 plus 90 times the quantity. Okay, I'm gonna do this. And the first quantity is going to be e to the negative point 0.1t all over a negative point 0.1, that's this in here, minus, um, and now it's going to be e to the uh, negative point 0.1 times 0, right, all Correct. over a negative point 0.1. Questions on this point? Now, oh, okay, I'm okay. I was think, panicking here for a minute. Um, what's, what, this here value is just itself. I'm not going to change this. Are you with me? See, yes, this, this is just like it. What does this turn out to be? Yeah. Oh, um, hey, we've got an answer over here, and I wasn't that fast. He says this is going to be 10. Negative uh, well, there's, okay, it's a negative, what circle is a negative 10? Because this here uh, is 0, so e to the 0 is 1, 1 over 0 0.1 is 10. Cool, so negative and negative is a positive, and so this is 100 plus 90 times 10, right? 900. 900, okay, now this is 1,000. Oh, you're making it go fast. Plus... Uh, this year is still here. 90 e to the negative point 1 t. Divide that negative point 1. Yeah, still by a minus point 0.1. Okay? And um, you see, whoopsie, just a second. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he gets rid of this too by making this what? Okay, this negative makes this a negative. Okay, now that, that's out of here. This here makes this a 900 like this, and now this is out of here. See that? Okay, now this is really, really cool stuff, as far as I'm concerned. Especially when you start putting some other numbers in here and to find out where t, where t is. Okay? Now, I'll show you something else. I'm going to show you this function on the board, uh, or up on the um, decimals. But I'm going to give you this one first of all. Uh, notice this here. This is what we're adding, all this stuff in here. We're adding to 90. No, we're adding to 100. Mm -hmm. That 100, all this we're adding as we're going along here. Now we're not going to be adding very much anymore, are we? Mm -hmm. Very little. Okay, now um, I also have this then. Um, I wish Desmos had a little more that we could do with calculus. Um, now this is this, the second function. That's this function right here. See that? Now look what happens here. You'd think, okay, that's that's interesting. Does it keep going on forever? And it doesn't. This is the maximum. It never goes over a thousand. It approaches a thousand. Okay? And those are the kind of problems we would call logistics. Now I have I have some beef with this book. 
in terms of some of the problems are too hard at the beginning and then they fall along pretty nicely. But this one I've never seen done any better in terms of showing these kinds of relationships. I, and I really like that. And so, the, see, uh, now this represents, this line represents how many? Not the area underneath, the line does. Can I get the distinction? How are you doing, Grant? All right. Think you can handle those? Sure. Okay. Um, then the next one we're going to do, I'll try to do on um, on Monday, and that's just going to be a linear equation. It's not as nice as this in terms of all the power we have over here. Uh, so, um, now you think you can take care of yourself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have fun. What is due Monday, and what is due Tuesday? A nice question. Well, do what it says is do Monday is do Monday. This this part just yeah. down here. Okay. Okay. Now. Oh, oh.